more, you know, mean with the pressure and sliding into it, what we'll almost do if we do it well, especially if you're kind of bony like me, is you'll kind of get a reaction, get the person to move a little bit, which will again start to expose these openings for wedges and things we're going to start to talk about. Okay, really, I know this is really kind of boring right now, but if you guys find that point, it's the rest of the class is going to be, will make a lot more sense. Can we turn one more time? And I'm sorry for smashing your head. Okay. Over here. Boom. All right, again, if you've got it, had a little more uh, advanced version. What I want you guys to do is slide back a little bit. I'm going to slide your chest off of your partner. Start low. I'm going to start with your hip on the mat and slide up the ramp of your partner's face right to that front. Now you kind of see how when I do that, mat starts to move that way a little bit. Kind of turns with it a little bit because of the pressure. Okay. If you're still kind of trying to figure out where that is and kind of feel it a little bit, then just nice and easy. Okay. Take another minute or so. Just walk over and just kind of put that point of your hip against the jaw and then just start to slowly turn the partner's head, okay? And have them talk to you, Matt. That feels good still? Yeah, okay. People are good from the bottom now. They're good with your defense. So it's very difficult to kind of pin someone with really like good shoulder pressure and hold them, right? And, and even if I do that, it's, it's very hard to kind of have to create openings that way, at least for me, right? So when I do this, when I kind of bypass this, and again, I don't care if your arms are in or out. If your arm gets stuck out like that and they do it, that's even better, right? It's just kind of... Take me down different pathways for that. Okay. Over here, sitting here is difficult. Controlling the head is difficult. Here, if I control the head, and again, I should see you guys with the head down, head up. So if we're sprawling here, I'm, I'm trying to be nice about what I do, but I'm literally head up to the chest. Okay. Sprawl. Okay. Now you guys will notice the head is essentially pinned. Okay? It's really very hard for Matt to move his head if I have all my weight there. He's probably already going that way, and he can't turn the opposite way now. And even if he does manage to so strongly, he does manage to turn that way. My hand is already here. My arm is already here to monitor the legs, to monitor the legs, right? So it, it almost becomes this thing where when I put pressure like this, there's really very few things that he can do. And like I said, I have like this 360 view of the legs, of the arms, of everything. So even if he does move, I'm one step ahead of him. I'm always one step ahead of the movement. I know where he's going to go before he does, okay? So again, just a little backstory on why I think this is, at least for me now, better than just a, more of a traditional side control or any other top position. It, it just works really well. I don't have to give a lot up. The worst case scenario is in a second when I show you guys how to wedge and kind of get this person up on their side to step over, right? The worst case scenario is Matt doesn't move and what? I haven't lost anything. I'm still on top, okay? And then I can just transition to something else. So it's very low risk. And if I do it well, it's very high reward. I, I, I get him up on one side. I control the opposite hip, and it's very hard to move, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. You good? You guys with yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's turn a tiny bit and go this way. All right, so now all we're going to do is start building our wedge. We're going to start building a little bit of space, right, if you will, or, or kind of multiply that space with our leg, with our wedges here behind that shoulder, okay? So you guys are going to start with doing the same thing. If you've got it, again, try to slide off and turn and sprawl and drive, right? And as you do that, you'll notice that your partner, if you do it well, nine out of ten times, will kind of start to move in that direction that you want them to go, okay? I'll know that again because I can see everything. So as I drive, I can feel Matt in. I can see his legs and hips. Move the direction I want him to go, even just a little bit, okay? So now what we're going to look to do here, and you can do this a bunch of different ways, but for now, you just going to keep it basic, all right? You guys are looking at, you're going to look to kind of get behind this arm and the shoulder and start pulling this up a little bit, all right? And it can literally be as simple as you just lifting your partner up and starting to slide that thigh right into that space, okay? My toes are active, so if Matt tries to push back into me, I have like a good ramp here. It's very hard for him to flatten back out, okay? Exactly. And I'm just going to slowly start to keep driving him that way, and pull him up onto his side, okay? You guys will notice here that as I do that here, I'm gonna look to scoop up an underhook here. It's a very easy underhook in the movement. So we're just going this way, pulling, wedging, and pushing the underhook, okay? That's all I want you guys to do for now. If you want, you can even drop your chest behind the shoulder a little bit, and just observe how it's, it's fairly difficult for the person to turn back into you now, okay, just because your weight is there. Even if Matt does beat my chest, which he very well will, right? When he gets to that thigh, you guys see it kind of hits the stopper there, okay? Obviously in real life, I'm not going to stay in this position as soon as I get him up, right? I'm going to be starting to step over into whatever attacks we want to go for, okay? But that's the, the foundation of, of the position.